this, it will drip on the furniture and on you. So please don't do that. Hold it straight up and down. Hold it straight up and down, not sideways. Straight up and down, and it won't. And it's beeswax. Make sure you take it home, pure beeswax. You smell it. You can smell the honey, the bee. I'm going to talk a little bit about beeswax during the homily. So I'm going to invite you to go outside now. In a moment, just I'm going to give a moment, and I'm going to invite uh, you to go outside and to surround the fire in the uh, gathering space. Okay. Be careful. <laughs> and when I blow out my taper, that's when you blow out your taper at the beginning, okay?
My dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and to pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. Thanks be to God.
May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may worthily proclaim the Paschal mystery praise in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebearers, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire Banish the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now, throughout the world, sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. 
This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer, the sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. On this your night of grace, O oh, Holy Father, Accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 My dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in these last days has sent his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, 
when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. While the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place and let dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas and God saw that it was good then God said let the earth put forth vegetation plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it and it was so the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind and God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, 
and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with the seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
send forth your spirit and renew the face of the Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, And Abraham said, here I am. God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and Abraham said, Here I am, my son. (coughs) Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When Abraham and Isaac came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. 
But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. The angel said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham looked up and saw the ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will make your offspring a numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessings for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, Supreme Father of the faithful, who increased the children of your promise by pouring out the grace of adoption throughout the whole world, and who through the Paschal mystery make your servant Abraham father of nations as once you swore, grant, we pray, that your peoples may enter worthily into the grace to which you call them, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But you, lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the children of Israel may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who is going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there in the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the sea on dry ground. The waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord, in the pillar of fire and cloud, looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into a panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the children of Israel, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the children of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea. The waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant, Moses. The prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and dancing. Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. I will sing, I will sing to the God who set me free. Pharaoh's army and his chariots got cast into the sea. I will tell me as his chariots cast into the sea. The Lord is my strength, my protection and my shield. Pharaoh's army and his chariots cast into the sea. Our God is a warrior whose name is the Lord, God of might, God of victory. I will sing, I will sing to 
set me free. I will sing, I will sing to the God who sets me free. Pharaoh's army and his chariots got cast into the sea. Pharaoh's army and his chariots are cast into the sea. The brave and the mighty, the pride of Pharaoh's army, God plunged them to the bottom of the sea like a stone. The hand of the Lord is magnificent in power. The Lord has crushed our foes. I will sing, I will sing to the God who sets me free. I will sing, I will sing to the God who sets me free. Pharaoh's army and his chariots be cast into the sea. O oh God, who redeems, who delivers us from slavery, you set us on the mountain of your holy place. Your throne and your temple shall endure for all time. Your reign shall sing, I will sing to the God who sets me free. Pharaoh's army and his chariots got cast into the sea. Pharaoh's army and his chariots be cast into the sea. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people, grant, we pray, that all nations obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith, may be reborn by partaking of your Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. The God of the whole earth he is called. For the Lord has called you like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, like the wife of a man's youth when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In overflowing wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is like the days of Noah to me. Just as I swore that the waters of Noah 
would never again go over the earth, so I have sworn that I will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. O oh, afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, I am about to set your stones in antimony and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of jewels, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the prosperity of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledged to the patriarchs by reason of their faith, and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise, so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their way and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Hear the commandments of life, O Israel. Give ear and learn wisdom. Why is it, O Israel, why is it that you are in the land of your enemies, that you are growing old in a foreign country, that you are defiled with the dead, that you are counted among those in Hades? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. If you had walked in the way of God, you would be living in peace forever. Learn where there is wisdom, where there is strength, where there is understanding, so that you may at the same time discern where there is length of days and life, where there is light for the eyes and peace. Who has found her place? And who has entered her storehouses? But the one who knows all things knows her. He found her by his understanding. The one who prepared the earth for all time filled it with four-footed creatures, the one who sends forth the light, and it goes. He called it, and it obeyed him, trembling. The stars shone in their watches and were glad. He called them, and they said, Here we are. They shone with gladness for him who made them. This is our God. No other can be compared to him. He found the whole way to knowledge and gave her to his servant Jacob, and to Israel, whom he loved. Afterward, she appeared on earth and lived with humanity. She is the book of the commandments of God, the law that endures forever. All who hold her fast will live, and those who forsake her will die. Turn, O Jacob, and take her. Walk toward the shining of her light. Do not give your glory to another or your advantages to an alien people. Happy are we, O Israel, for we know what is pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O God, who constantly increase your church by your call to the nations, graciously grant to those you wash clean in the waters of baptism the assurance of your unfailing protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, when the house of Israel lived on their own soil, they defiled it with their ways and their deeds. Their conduct in my sight was unclean, so I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land, and for the idols with which they had defiled it. I scattered them amongst the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries. In accordance with their conduct and their deeds, I judged them. But when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my holy name, in that it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, and yet they had to go out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when through you I display my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from the idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O God, who by the pages of both Testaments instruct and prepare us to celebrate the Paschal mystery, grant that we may comprehend your mercy so that the gifts we received from you this night may confirm our hope of the gifts to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing to the Lord our God, whose glory is from age to age. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, the peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we adore you. Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of Christ's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too 
might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your, in your heart and upon your lips that you may proclaim this holy gospel with the resurrection in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. 
After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. This is the night. This is the night when death was conquered by life. This is the night when light conquers the darkness. This is the night when we remember that from the very dawn of creation, as the Spirit hovered over the waters of creation, until this night, we know that God is at work. God's Spirit is here, present among us. This is the night when we remember that Abraham, who had only one son, was willing to sacrifice him Imagine, to sacrifice him at the Lord's command and held back at the last moment by the angel of the Lord. This is the night that the people of Israel utterly understand their identity as they walk through the Red Sea, dry shod, and the Egyptians behind them get covered in water. This is the night when we remember the power of God who says, come without paying, without price. Come and eat and drink what is good. This is the night when we remember that even though we may have hearts of stone, God will remove those hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh. Hearts that feel, hearts that hurt, hearts that get wounded, even if by the church's own sin. This is the night when we know that sin is conquered, that grace prevails. This is the night when we remember that we who have been baptized have been baptized into the death of Christ, and if we have been baptized into his death, then surely we will experience a resurrection like his. This is the night when we celebrate in fire and wind, in word and in sacrament, in oil and bread and wine, the power the vulnerability, the compassion, and the mercy of our God. This is the night. There is a a whole lot of ink that's been spilled over the years about the exalted that Deacon Dell so wonderfully proclaimed, sang. That exalted talks about how the honeybees had had fashioned this 
incredible gift of wax that burns, provides the light, a candle that's divided but undimmed. And that, I find, is the beauty of our parish building here, that each of the sections gets to see the other sections with the candles. If it was just one block long, all you would see is the back of somebody else's head. But you get to see that light on this side, over here, on this side, over here. You get to see the beauty that we get to see as presiders and ministers at the altar. And earlier last year in the fall, I got to travel to New Zealand and when I was there, I uh, visited a honey farm, a bee farm that had honey, and was able to find this small bee statue, miniature, whatever you want to call that, to put into our candle, into this candle, a reminder that this candle that burns tonight, that is the light of Christ, this candle is the work of God's creation, the bee, with the pollen and the work, and the work of human hands that fashioned and made that candle and engraved it with the year, with the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, Christ Jesus. And so this Paschal candle, this Easter candle, this light that is that is the focus of the beginning of our celebration this year is a reminder of Christ, the light of the world, the one from whom every candle that we have, including our own tapers, when we renew our baptismal promises shortly, every candle that is lit shares in the light of Christ this night. This is the night. This is the night when we celebrate this most beautiful mystery of Christ, who in his suffering and death has set us free from sin so that we might live forever in him. As we journey to bless the water uh, for the year, we call upon all of the angels and saints. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mary and Joseph, pray for us. Michael and all the angels, pray for us. And Joachim Elizabeth, pray for us. Elijah Moses, John the Pray for us. Jacob, Joseph, and Samuel. Pray for us. Ruth, David, and Solomon. Pray for us. Isaiah, Jeremiah. Pray for us. Oh.
pray for us. Mary Magdalene, Veronica, pray for us. Barnabas, Bethania, pray for us. Stephen, Philip, Cornelia, pray for us. Grisha and Aquila, pray Pray for us. Light is clean as in clemens. Pray for us. Oh, you holy men and women, pray for us. Lawrence and Chris Ogilva. Pray. O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and in who many ways have prepared water, your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. 
O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself power to sanctify. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed the regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and the beginning of virtue. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people, set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of the baptized. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. May this water received by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that the human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font. So that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
My dear sisters and brothers, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the, resurrection, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace, Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Blow out. With joy the church calls the candidates for confirmation to come forward with their sponsor, Caitlin Truscott and Connor Truscott. Please come forward. My dear friends in St. Mary's Parish, 
Let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted son and daughter, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon these candidates, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Caitlin, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Connor, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our newest initiated members of St. Mary's Parish. Let our Easter praises arise to God, who has given us a new birth into a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, as we offer our intercessions for the needs of the whole human family. For Caitlin and Connor, confirmed with the spirit of the risen Christ, and for the people of all nations and all generations to whom Christ's resurrection offers the fullness of salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For all Christians who this night celebrate the triumph of light over darkness and life over death. For those whose hearts and minds are troubled or burdened. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those throughout the world whose lives are broken by hatred or oppression, for all who have died through acts of violence, for those who continue to choose violence, and for healing for the sick, strength for all bringing medical and pastoral care to the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders who commit themselves to bringing peace to all peoples, and for the people of Ukraine who seek the peace of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for those who are sick, including Salem Issa, Getulio Bologna, and for all of those on our parish sick list, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died and who share in the victory of Christ, including Doris Murphy and Mary Meehan, and for all of those who mourn, we pray to the Lord. 
Hear our prayers, O God of glory, and fill your church with the power flowing from Christ's resurrection, so that sent into the world that your Son redeemed, we may be the beginnings of a renewed humanity, risen to new life with Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. May, May the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in Paschal mysteries may now, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, giving you thanks, he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Thomas and Francis our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. They are we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, power, and the glory, glory are yours, Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace.
Caitlin and Connor, for the first time you will join us at the table of the Savior to share in the Eucharist this life given to us to give us life for the life of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the risen Lord who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I need to say some thanks. Uh, thanks for two extraordinary women in uh, my life and in the life of the parish, uh, Catherine and Shannon, uh, involved in liturgy and music and our youth. Uh, uh, thank you very much for all that you do and allow us to celebrate so well. To uh, my two bodyguards that make me feel like I'm an archbishop or something with two, uh, two uh, uh, deacons. And uh, to Father Scott and to Father Nehemiah, my brother priests, and to our entire parish team, uh, David and uh, uh, Susan, Kathy and Pat, uh, who did so much to make this day, this triduum, beautiful. And all of us who have celebrated in so great numbers, who have returned to worship in person, thank you for your presence here that bolsters our joy as ministers. And thank you to the altar servers uh, and to our youth ministry who uh, celebrated a beautiful passion of the Lord uh, yesterday evening. And uh, thank you uh, always, first and foremost, to God through the gift of Christ Jesus and the resurrection in whom we have life. And we want to thank the choirs who have celebrated throughout these days uh, and uh, uh, sang such great songs. You know, the, I think that that uh, responsorial psalm for the third after the third reading, got all the children excited and they were running all over the place. So that's exactly what it's supposed to do. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We want to invite you to come on Tuesday evening to the parish hall for a, a reflection on our experience of the Triduum of Thursday, Friday, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday, uh, uh, 7.30 on Tuesday evening in the parish hall. I promise you there will be good food <laughs> and there will be chocolate. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten, endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast, come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Risen today, Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, Alleluia, suffer to redeem our lost 